Hey, let's see if we can get something else good. ST Gundam, ST Sengokuden 2, Tenkatoitsu Hen. Hmm, probably gonna be an RPG, so doubt it'll be good. Okay then. We only have one player and two players, so that's interesting. And I believe Sengoku Den was uh, SD Sengoku Den. Oh, jeez, it's one of these types. Okay, makes sense. But um, I believe it was. You know, uh, I I'm pretty sure there was an SD Sengoku Den series. Which had like Night Gundam and others like that. Alright, so moving through the forest takes multiple points of movement. Good to know. Trying to figure out how to attack or do other things like that, but of course now I'm not even sure how to pass the turn. No, oh, maybe they already moved. Not honestly certain how to fight. Oh, there we go. Now we're gonna fight. I, um. <laughs> okay. It's this kind of thing. Alright, and yep, B button fires Vulcans, I suppose. Yep, we'll just let him waste all of his ammo. So this appears to be a really terrible fighting system. I think I wasted most of my ammo. I think the invincibility frames there were... Now I'm just out of ammo entirely, and I do believe he is as well. Let's try that again. So yeah, don't think we can actually defeat him. Also, I'm pretty sure that's a Zanzibar, and I don't know what mine is supposed to be. Probably white base, but you never know. And my guy disappeared? Hmm. So, you know. Oh wait, my guy didn't disappear, he just, um, stayed where he was. <laughs> well, that was easy. Bye then. All right, so head and murder more things with our, you know, white base. And he wasted all of his ammo, firing at nothing. Not very good AI here, frankly. Oh, 
Although, yeah, not having a... Not having any kind of melee attack kind of puts us at a major disadvantage here. Yep, that's okay. I think that's a Gelgoog, then. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that worked out. Here we go with this again. Go ahead, waste all your ammo. Yeah, I'm okay with this. We can just wait out the timer and maybe finish him off on my turn. Wait, how's he attacking again? Oh, anyways. There. Alright, so what happens if... No, we can't move on to... Can okay. Find out. <laughs> yeah, let's actually well let's take out this goon first. Loving how they waste all their ammo like without fail. this with him. Whoops. It's not, uh, actually get hurt by his little shots. You know, that's okay. <laughs> the balls. Uh, the balls have done nothing. And he's not going to move to attack. Interesting. Well, there we go. We win. <laughs> oh, that's kind of amazing. So, that's all we're going to play of this game. Um, this seems... Wow, that's a lot of uh, units. <laughs> seems like a sort of okay, sort of old-timey tactics game with action fights. And now I have one of those. Okay. And we probably would have had that other guy if I had uh, not let him die, but no real matter because we're not going to keep playing. So this has been SD Gundam, SD Sengokuden, something or other. It was a really long title. And yeah, um... Don't think I would actually recommend it since there are so many better... Even SD Gundam tactics games like this, and then you get into things that are really better like the Super Robot Wars series, so... You know... Probably not recommended, unless you really want some novelty in your fights. So yeah, we are quite done here. Alright, what do we have first up today?
Come I touch no Yoru Advance. Well, let's go play a Japanese visual novel. So yeah, um, Kamaitachi no Yoru is a fairly famous, well, Kamaitachi no Yoru is a Japanese folklore monster, <coughs> it translates to Knight of the Sickle Weasel, which is basically, you know, a sort of a ghostly weasel with sickle arms that, <coughs> excuse me, would, um, pretty much, uh, slash up things murder things, and, you know, be all ghostly and monstrous. And on the Super NES, there was, well, exactly this. <laughs> it was a visual novel with, um, much more emphasis on the vis uh, on the uh, novel part than on the visual part. Uh, most of the characters that you meet are shown in shadow like this here. And, um, it is essentially like a choose-your-own-adventure type visual novel. There's no, you know, like, stats to manage. There's no day-to-day -day stuff. It's just you're reading a novel, and at various points there will be choices for you to make which will affect which ending you get. You may notice the big issue here in us playing this game is that it's entirely in Japanese, and... Yeah, <laughs> the extent of this playthrough is going to be as long as I have information to talk about, which honestly is not going to be very much longer. Um, I I did watch the Game Center CX episode in which Arno played through this. Well, not the Game Boy Advance version, of course. He played the Super NES version. And no, I'm not going to make up a story like Zeta. That is Zeta's thing. I can actually read Japanese, so when I care to, I can try to translate, but I'm not going to try and translate an entire goddamn novel. But anyways, um... Oh, see, here we go. We have a choice. I watched that Game Center CX episode probably three or four years ago. So, you know, it has been way too long, and I don't really remember much about the story or the characters, or anything of that nature. I also don't remember if Arino got the good ending or not, <laughs> but uh, knowing how that usually goes, probably not. And do elaborate. Uh, Evie in the chat just said this visual novel is actually a subtype of visual novel, a sound novel. That's uh, not a word I've ever heard with. Not, not a term I'm familiar with. What exactly puts it as a sound novel? Considering, like, if it was, well. Now, even then, most of the visual novels on PC are read aloud, so that's what I would assume would be a sound novel, but... Because basically this just has music and text, so I have no idea what clarifies it as a sound novel. Also, kudos on that, you actually managed to extend this by another couple of minutes. I was just about to stop. Three choices.
and I've been quiet for a while because Evie has not yet answered. So if anybody else knows this information or can quickly Google it, let me know. I'm now curious about this. Here we go. A sound novel is similar to a visual novel in that the gameplay requires relatively little player interaction, as most of the game is composed of text dialogues. The original release contained no voice acting for the characters. While the visual novel's basis would be the visual aspect, as the name suggests, the sound novel's basis takes more care in producing an atmosphere via the music, sound effects, and the story itself. Okay, yeah, that that I can, uh, I can totally get that. <laughs> and yeah, given that this is a horror visual novel, um, a lot of the endings will depend on who is still alive at the end of the game. I can totally get the whole going for atmosphere via music and sound effects. And I do also agree with Fowl that it is really not all that much different from a visual novel other than people are not reading aloud the dialogue, which, you know, that has a lot more to do with the confines of it being a very old game. You know, Super NES game that couldn't possibly have all of this dialogue read aloud. So, um, yeah. <laughs> really doesn't seem like much of a subgenre and more of a thing that really had to happen given the limitations of the consoles at the time. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say this has been Kamaitachi no Yoru Advance. If you do want to uh, experience this game, I would highly recommend seeking out the Game Center CX episode and, uh, you know, checking it out as the good folks of the Something Awful crew have uh, translated that one. I think it's them anyway, it's probably them. They're responsible for like 80% of the <laughs> Game Center CX translations out there. But, um, yeah, from what I recall, it is a fairly interesting story, and, um, you can see Arno trying to <laughs> play through repeatedly to get the good end, as I recall, and, you know, try to make sure people stay alive. So, you know, that'll be all for me for this, and that would be my only recommendation is watch that episode Obviously, if you speak Japanese, you can track down either this or the SNES version, but even then, probably watching somebody else play through it would be an easier way to go, I guess. So, yeah, my recommendation, skip the game, just watch the episode. <laughs> and we're done here. Okay, what else can we get in here today? Angelica. Okay. Go do a dating sim on the Game Boy Advance. This one auto scrolls with the dialogue. This 
so I could have sworn that it was a dating sim, but these costumes are, or these outfits are making me think otherwise. Basically, the only familiarity I have with the series is that I do remember in the very first season of Game Center CX, Arino played uh, Angelique Tra uh, Twa on the um, what the system was that I don't really even remember anymore, but he played the game in the Angelique series, and I swear that was a dating sim sort of game, but can't honestly remember anymore. It was during that interview season, so the game challenge itself was very truncated. Obviously, it was during their Koei interview episode. Hey, we finally get a title screen! Not inputting a name, we get the default of Angelique. Each character in turn.
naming the freaking continent now? Possibly island? I don't know how big this thing is. Let's see what the default name given is. Looks like the default name is Illusion. Sure. I was going to have freedom of choice of where to go, but apparently not. Visual novel style choices, which I assume do affect a lot of things. I think we're about done here. I mean, we're not really going to get to a proper game because it's essentially a visual novel. So, you know, this seems fine for being a Japanese visual novel. So yeah, uh, this has been Angelique. I guess only really recommended if you obviously speak Japanese and are into dating sim, possibly, style visual novels. So, um, yeah. Totally done here. 